let's look at another possible hypothesis space for the same problem, M of N rules. There are 32 possible rules here grouped into sets of 1, sets of 2, sets of 3, and then 4. So we have, in all, 32 possible rules emerging from these sets. And then whether we consider 1 of, 2 of, 3 of, or 4 of these variables which must be true so m of n is one of so here this how do you read this one so it's one of x1 is true for y to be true and then for each of these we try to look at the data and then find if there are any counter examples that make this rule not valid uh, for this data and we can see that there is only one function that actually one of these rules that works uh, for all these data instances. And remember, we have actually 16 possible instances and we only have the values of y for seven of these instances. Right. So we only have our data set size is seven. So we only have seven instances in our data set and we want to fit all these instances to these functions to make sure that we can fit this data to this this hypothesis and we can see here this only one that satisfies so let's go back and look at these rules understand them uh, and see why they don't um, fit the data the other ones Okay, so let's start from the beginning. So we have x1, 1 of x1. We only have one variable here. So we cannot have 2 of, 3 of, and 4 of rules for these first four uh, sets. We just have one variable in each. x1, 1 of x1. So we can read this as either x1 is true and y is true. So that is the only way y is true. So we can now look for counter examples. So we can see that 3, x1 is 0, but y is 1. So that is clearly a counter example. And that's why that rule won't work. Now let's go to the second one, x2. x2 is true and y is true. So, but here x2 is true, but y is not true. So, that is a counterexample. 2 is a counterexample. Now, let's take the next one, x3. x3, again, we have x3 is true in the first one itself, but y is not true, 0. So, that won't work. So, that is a counterexample. 1 is a counterexample for... 1 of x3. Let's look at x4 as well while we're here. x4 is true. Then y is true. So this works. x4 is true. y is true. So this again fits. But here x4 is true. But y is not true, y is 0. So that won't work, and that is a counterexample for this rule. 1 of x4 is true. So we can see the counterexample is 7. So these four easy ones we have finished now. So let's look at more complex ones. And as it becomes more complex, we have multiple counterexamples, and we are not listing all the counterexamples here in this. Um, in this table. So we only are listing one counterexample from a set of counterexamples that are possible for um, these rules. So let's look at x1, x2. So 1 of x1, x2 is true. So 1 of x1, x2 is true. Uh, this 1 of x1, x2 is true, but y is 0. So this is a counterexample. 
again one of x1 x2 should be true for y to be 1 but here both are 0 but y is 1 so there's another counter example and x1 x2 1 is true in 5 but y is 0 there's another counter example and so on so we only have listed one of the counter examples here but there are multiple of them okay let's look at two of x1 x2 for next so for two of x1 x2 we the only thing that actually fits is this where both are true but then here it is zero but in others as well when for example in three both are zero and y is one so that's a counter example right so we're just listing one of the counter examples but there are multiple of multiple examples here that don't fit um, this example this uh, rule sorry okay so let's look at another rule maybe we'll look at uh, three now x1 x2 x3 so one of x1 x2 x3 should be true then y is true so here one of x1 x2 x3 is true but y is not true so then again here one is a counter example okay so let's now look at this one our example for which or the rule for which the there are no counter examples let's look at that so i'm going to erase it so there's no confusion okay so let's look at this here we have x1 x3 x4 so x1 x3 x4 two of them x1 x3 x4 should be true for y to be true so we have y true here y is true and x3 and x4 are true that fits y is true x1 x4 are true that also fits and is there anywhere else x1 and x4 both are or one of sorry two of x1 x3 and x4 are true where y is zero that also does not occur right that's true so that's why this particular rule fits all the examples there are no counter examples that's why we get this as fitting the data so there are two views of learning overall learning is the removal of uncertainty so we want to look at hypothesis space that where we are more likely to find a solution but it also means that we have to have a good hypothesis space where uh, but it's not infinitely large and it's doable so that we can allocate computation time to find the right function within that hypothesis space that fits our data and we generally could be wrong most of the time first few attempts we are likely to be wrong because we know less about the hypothesis space that could fit our data uh, we don't know much about the domain so these are factors that could play and our prior knowledge could be wrong we may be looking in the wrong place and we may be looking uh, at smaller than ideal hypothesis space this is often the reason why we cannot find the right hypothesis because if it is too small the likelihood of it housing our preferred hypothesis is also small and we can see that there are other rules that could be also right for the same data x4 and one of x1 x3 also is consistent with the training data x4 and not of x2 implies y 
also is consistent with the training data. But which one of these three right ones is actually the best fit? That is something we won't know until we actually get more data. If we get more data and it, we have counterexamples for a function that we already chose to be our hypothesis, then we have to look somewhere else and maybe then we can consider the other hypothesis, these two new ones and see if um, the counterexample, if there are counterexamples for these as well. If there are no counterexamples, then maybe this one of these is a better fit for the data. So there are two strategies generally we use for machine learning. We develop languages for expressing prior knowledge. Now this is used uh, a lot in NLP where you have a particular um, rule or um, set of rules that you can use to predict. And um, slowly people are moving away from this rule-based approaches to approaches which have flexible hypothesis spaces. The reason is because you oftentimes cannot chart out all the rules that govern the domain, um, even for languages. Languages are a perfect fit for rules because uh, there are grammar rules that you learn um, when you're learning the language. And if we can translate the grammar rules um, to a, for a computer, it should be easy for the computer to, to replicate that. And that's how we actually learned uh, language, right? So we can do that. We can pass on the same language as rules, as um, rules to the computer. But this somehow does not uh, work because uh, often there are lots of rules and um, as humans, we can learn them pretty easily by looking at even one example. We can just know that um, this is the right way to say something versus something else, but it's very hard for the computer to do that. So um, it also does not make the computer creative, uh, come up with new sentences, which are not just correct, but also meaningful and uh, convey uh, emotion, convey, um, uh, express thoughts in a more arranged or more uh, cohesive uh, succession one after another. So these things are very hard uh, just by using rules. And that's why uh, people are moving away from these rule-based grammar approaches um, and uh, proceeding more towards flexible hypothesis spaces, uh, picking models. So if you pick one model, for example, decision trees or um, neural networks, then that's one they have a set of functions that they can do. They have some capabilities. They cannot do some things. They also have some disadvantages. But overall, if you pick a, a good enough, a complex enough model, which is capable of exploring a good amount of hypothesis space, then that's the right fit for the problem. And also, uh, you sort of marry the model to the domain in question. So you don't want something um, that's not a good fit. So keep thinking about this. We will, as we see more and more models uh, in this course, we will, we will see how some models are a better fit for some domains and some kind of data. And, um, and not often that you have um, one model, like there's no one solution for all different problems that you may encounter in machine learning.